All right, folks, back with us, John. Oh, John Kizzy's not here. Uh, back <laughs> with C. Edmund Wright and Rick Unger on the Molesburg panel. Um, a couple of things. Um, I, uh, the uh, Defense Secretary uh, Hagel testifying today before Congress, uh, sticking up for uh, the release of the uh, Taliban members. And, and Rick, you know, first of all, he, uh, he said that he signed off on it. Uh, he said they don't pose a threat. Uh, but he also refused to, uh, to, uh, w to say whether or not he's factored in how much American treasure might be lost if we have to go after these guys again, as he acknowledged we might have to. Uh, it, it didn't look like a good performance by, uh, by Chuck Hagel. Uh, you know, I was watching it. How you reacted to the performance has everything to do with how you happen to fall on this issue. Look, this was a judgment call. I can't be upset with people who thought it was a terrible deal. I can't be upset with people who thought it was a good deal to get an American back. It's all how you come down on the deal. I get the deal. Uh, I actually thought Hagel did fine under the circumstances. Edmund, I'm sure you, uh, you uh, had your eyes on it for at least a part of the time. Yeah, well, no, I mean, Hagel's, this is a terrible deal. It's a terrible decision. It's, it's one of the biggest exploding cigars of the last five and a half years. And Hagel's being uh, thrown out there now as the fall guy. Uh, you know, with, with Hagel's reputation, it's probably going to be a pretty easy sell, too. But... But clearly, this was a misread of, of what Americans think of certain types of soldiers versus others. Uh, we don't always go get deserters. It was a terrible decision. It was politically devastating, uh, and before. and Hagel's just Hagel's just you know being backed under the bus. Don't know. Actually, you'd have to say, Edmund, that we do in fact always go get deserters because this is the first time it's ever happened. Therefore, well, it's one for I'll, one. Just thought I'd Rick, point that out. All I know is the special forces people have said that they knew where he was and made the decision not to go get him well, for a long was, time. I, I hear that. I'm just saying that your point was incorrect. In fact, we never have been faced with the issue before. Something that, that the secretary did bring out this morning. This was an odd situation. Now, I would agree with you, Edmund, that it was not handled the way that I would have handled it. I never would have made this big of a fuss. I would have brought the guy home very quietly, not secretly. Yeah. He would have come out. I'd have brought him home quietly, and I would have told the nation right from the outset that this is a weird situation be ready for disagreement yeah well, but i gotta tell you uh go ahead, go ahead edmund no no yeah i mean what rick said was perfectly reasonable there but come on i mean th this is not what this administration's about everything's political with them they were desperate to get the va story off the front pages they made the calculation this would do it have their nice little rose garden ceremony this is not an administration that's ever going to quietly do the right thing although sometimes they will loudly if do the wrong they had known if only they had known that that uh, the Republicans would get the VA story off the off the front page with what happened to Eric Cantor. We're going to be reading Republican stories for the next two weeks. Well, I got to tell you, uh, for the first time again in a post 9-11 world, we've now set a precedent and negotiated with terrorists and put a target on the back of every American soldier all over the world and American travelers uh, as they uh, embark into dangerous uh, territory as well or questionable territory. Uh, Rick Unger and C. Edmund Wright, I thank you both for being on the panel. Uh, we'll thank see you. you later. Always good to talk to both of you. And folks, we'll be back with more of the uh, Steve Molesberg Show. But first, today's America's Moment takes a look back at the day we lost the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. August 16, 1977 is a date forever remembered by music lovers throughout the world as the day the king died. Born a twin on January 8, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis Aaron Presley's twin brother Jesse died at birth, leaving the future entertainment legend to grow up a single child. After making his first recording at age 19 for Sun Records, one year later, RCA bought his contract, and within two years, Elvis Presley emerged as an international recording sensation. But at age 22, young Elvis was drafted into the Army. He declined special service status and trained alongside regular soldiers at Fort Hood before joining the Army's 3rd Armored Division in Germany. After two years of service and meeting his wife Priscilla, Sergeant Elvis Presley returned to civilian life and went on to star in 33 films and break records for his television specials and appearances. But concerts were always his first love. It's my favorite part of, of, of the business, is a live, live concert. 80,000 people lined the streets as a parade of white limousines made their way to Graceland to pay their final respects. 
Today, Graceland remains the second most visited home in America, after the White House. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.